Welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week, uh, Question of the Week is kind of an answer of the week sent in by James Hudson uh, about the radiator caps on a Subaru. Yeah, this, this came uh, kind of on the tail of, of us you know, explaining all the cooling issues that we had when we were at Super Light Battle. And so James Hudson is from Colonel Red Racing and he sent me a message. Uh, basically, he copied me um, some of the very bottom notes from a Mishimoto radiator about how to use the Mishimoto radiator cap, which was really interesting. So, like, play along with me here, Nigel. Imagine it was a week ago. Have you ever heard of a two-way radiator cap versus a one-way radiator cap? No. Me neither. I had never heard of this. This is the notes on the bottom of the install instructions for all Mishimoto radiators for Subarus, specifically for Subarus. And it says the provided Mishimoto radiator cap should replace the stock cap located on the expansion tank. So that's the, that's the coolant tank that's over by the intake manifold. The stock cap attached to the radiator should be installed on the Mishimoto performance radiator. So what they're saying is, even though they ship the Mishimoto radiator with their cap on it, you need to take that off, put it on the expansion tank, and move your stock radiator cap over to the Mishimoto radiator. The reason is because the Mishimoto radiator cap is a two-way valve, while the stock radiator cap is a, is a one-way valve or single valve cap. Due to the difference in construction, the Mishimoto cap cannot be used on the radiator. If the Mishimoto cap is fit on the radiator, overheating may occur. And I think he sent us this because, you know, he noticed that we're running two Mishimoto caps on, basically on, on, both, on both reservoirs. And that was, that was the first, honestly, that I've heard or had heard of a two-way versus one-way cap. So, Nigel, what is the difference between a two-way radiator cap and a one-way radiator cap? The valve. The valve. One, one has one valve, one has two valves, but they, they look almost identical. The difference is that the one-way cap that is supposed to be on the radiator can only open to release pressure. That's it. Once, once it closes back down after it's released the pressure, it's, its job is done. That is the round cap that's on the radiator from the factory. Now, a two-way cap has got a little bit of a dome on the very bottom of the cap where it goes into the fitting. And if you if you look at that, and if you actually just, just pull up a little bit on that little on that little dome, it opens up. That is the second valve. That is what makes the radiator cap a two-way cap. This is what opens under vacuum as your car is cooling off to let your car pull coolant back in from the overflow tank. So you know, under normal operation, you would be made another video about it where you know as the car warms up, the coolant expands. It's supposed to go into the overflow tank, and then when the car cools off. There's a, there's a vacuum present in, in the cooling system and that pulls the coolant back in. That's through the two-way valve, way valve. So apparently what Mishimoto is saying, like, like at, the, at the core of it, is if you have two two-way valves, two valves on the, on the Subaru cooling system that would be able to pull coolant back in, overheating may occur. And of course, then that leads to the question, okay, so we haven't been using a standard Mishimoto cap, but we've been using a, a Mishimoto cap. Is it a, a two-bar cap or not? And then looking around, every aftermarket cap that we could find is a two-way cap, not a one-way cap. The best is we can figure the reason for that is Subaru is one of the very few cars that has two radiator caps. Almost every other car out there just has a single radiator cap, so it would need to be a two-way cap, a two-way valve that can let pressure out and then can pull coolant back in when the engine cools off. It's very unusual to have a car that has a second cap and again, from, from Subaru, apparently, that second cap has to be a one-way valve. So why are there two caps in the first place? In doing research, I have a guess. And, and part of the guess comes from the naming, the nomenclature. So what, what Subaru calls in the service manual the radiator cap is actually the cap that's on the expansion tank. And the cap that's on the radiator, Subaru calls that a pressure relief valve, or pressure relief, yeah, pressure relief valve. And in the, in the little notes about the pressure relief valve, it says it's to prevent damage to the cooling system. All right, now, let's think back to 2002-2003, the WRX. That radiator did not have a cap on it. That radiator was, was sealed, and there was only one radiator cap in the whole cooling system, and that was on the expansion tank. But the factory radiators, to this day, 
have plastic end tanks that are just crimped on top of the, the center of the radiator. And along, you know, back in, in those times when, when the WX had a radiator with no cap on it, there was a lot of radiator failures. So if, if the car got warm and whatnot, a lot of times the, the fingers that were crimped to hold the, the top tank on loosened up, started leaking coolant out. The radiator had to be replaced. So my best guess is that the reason Subaru put that cap on there in the first place is just to relieve pressure if it got high enough to the point where it might damage the core, damage, damage the top tank of the radiator to prevent that damage so that the cooling system would continue to function. But those early WRXs and STIs, they didn't have a cap there. So I'm guessing that that's where the second cap came from. But it's because it was added on and it was not on the expansion tank which is also something that's a little bit unusual. Most of the time, most, most cars do not have an expansion tank. So the fact that Subaru has one, that's a little bit unusual too. But I think that's why Subaru made it a one-way valve there, because they knew that if they made it a two-way valve, that it would potentially cause issues. And, and as we said in the other video that we made, the, the, from the factory, Subaru always puts a higher pressure cap on the radiator than on the expansion tank. So everybody wants an aftermarket higher pressure radiator cap or expansion tank cap. Yep. Um, is that right? Is that good? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure anymore. Because, as I said, in, in looking around, every aftermarket cap that we can find is a two-way cap. What I'm still not 100% clear on is exactly what causes the issue by having a two-way cap in both locations. But it seems more and more likely now that that differential in pressure is really important, especially so if you're going to have two two-way caps on the car. Um, so in, in, in trying to figure out what was going on with this, what why Mishimoto would put this on their super radiators and such, we did a lot of digging on the internet and we found a lot of mention and a lot of discussion where if people flip-flop the caps, on, like their factory caps on their, on their Subaru, the car would overheat. So, now where the, the obvious part that makes sense is, well, it's a lower pressure cap on the expansion tank, it's a higher pressure cap on the radiator, you flip those around, so now the radiator is popping off, the radiator cap is popping off at a much lower pressure, so obviously that's going to reduce the cooling capacity of the car. But there's another piece to that puzzle, which is, since you have a, a cap on the expansion tank that now does not have a valve that can pull the coolant back in, or and it's probably not going to pop off first compared to the radiator. If you have any air in the system that you would naturally get out with the proper configuration of caps, you'd be able to naturally burp the system as the car's run comes up to temperature. You flip the caps around, and that's not going to happen anymore. You're going to hold that air in, in the expansion tank, which is going to further reduce the cooling system's ability to handle heat load. So now there, there's it's pretty clear that there's really two reasons why cars overheat, a car would overheat if you get the radiator caps flipped. The, the question is, with aftermarket caps, what, what is the main consideration uh, of, as far as you know, pressure and location and type of cap to keep the cooling system functioning? Um, it's, this is a whole new layer that we're not 100% sure on. Um, and, and in talking around more and more people, there's a lot of people that are running like we were doing, two aftermarket caps or uprated caps, same pressure on both locations. And I'm wondering if, I, I, I now strongly suspect that that also is a strong contributor to effectively pushing coolant to the overflow or overflowing coolant. So I think that aftermarket caps can be good, but we've got to figure out what's going on with this one way and, this, and the two way caps. So is there a specific solution to which caps go where, how big, how much pressure should they have? Not yet. But we are, we are trying a few different things. And, and so um, what, I'll, what we're probably going to do is come back and make a Shop Chronicles video detailing. We've already actually made a pretty big change to the Pikes Peak car. And so we'll detail what that is and the rationale behind it. Um, Scotty's trying something and we've got Tasso uh, actually who's also going to be trying something out. Um, to see if if some of these changes, and now knowing these differences between these caps and using that to our advantage will help the cooling systems work better. The, the, the reason we really want to get to the bottom of this is 
one, like when we were trying to figure out what was going on in these camps, we asked a lot of people. And not very many people even knew about this difference between the one-way and the two-way camps. So there's not, we don't really have a clear picture of all of the, all of the key information here in now knowing how, how these different caps work to, to properly set them up on the cooling system. But we have some ideas and we're testing them out. So we're going to do our best to come back and give you that information as soon as we have it because it's, I feel like it's important. I mean, we, we've had this big overheating issue. It's not that uncommon between a lot of people, especially the tractor Subarus. And what it's really starting to seem like, especially knowing how, I mean, basically we spent a decent amount of time looking for a one-way aftermarket radiator cap and we couldn't find one. I wonder if this really is a problem, if this is a big reason why a lot of Subarus have overheating issues, because it's hard to get a proper configuration of caps for a Subaru because of their unique cooling system. So that's what we're trying to get the bottom of. Well, thanks everybody for checking out the question of the week. Remember we do these every week, almost. Almost. And uh, you can submit your questions in the comments below or on Instagram. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your support. And as always, until next time, stay tuned with Flyers too.